ಮಳೆ ಬಂತ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ So first impressions on the Sachetana project. Very impressed. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was um it seems that it's well utilized and good construction, um, simple and the people that we met seem to be very happy with the water that they were receiving from the tanks. Mm -hmm. And they were drinking it. Yeah, they were <laughs> offering it to me as well, which I think is a sign that they think it's very good water. Right. Mm. The challenges in scaling up such a project, mm. what could they be? Um, I think obviously there's a financial component which needs support at a government level. But also, I think uh, that to be to disseminate this approach and educate people that this is something that can work and is provides good water. So, um, spreading the word, I guess, getting getting word of mouth. Right. So you were also uh, thinking of about uh, optimizing the tank size and reducing the cost of the overall construction. Yeah. Yeah. Could be very important, right? Well, I just thought, um, because that's my background, is in a lot of um, water management type water balance work, uh, that it would be interesting to see how much room there is to move in tank size by looking at detailed sort of analysis of using daily rainfall data. So I thought that it could perhaps shed some light on whether mm -hmm. the tanks being installed are the ideal size for right. each family. Right. So just, uh, and you know, that, that can also come down the line, I suppose, just learning, are they running out of water and at what point in the year? Mm -hmm. If they're never running out, perhaps it is oversized. Right. Um, There's a line of thought which suggests that uh, if you drink fluoride-free water for about six months in a year, mm -hmm. That's good enough to sort of uh, prevent the impact of fluorosis. Yeah. Um, that would be a parallel uh, way of exploring how many days actually you need fluoride free water. Definitely. But I think you, from what I, it's not my field, but I, from what I understand, you need to look at the amount of fluoride intake from food as well, right. not just water. Right. But uh, yeah, I mean, as far as I know, it's more of a long term thing so that. If, if you can achieve the, um, 
if you look at the maximum amount you can take in over a year, it doesn't matter if you take it in the six months or the slowly yeah. over the 12. Right. Yeah. So in India, about 92 million people drink fluoride contaminated water and about 18 million people drink arsenic contaminated water. Mm. Mm. So it's about 110 million people who are actually getting bad quality groundwater. Mm. So one potential solution is rainwater. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I suppose, I don't know what percentage of that would be uh, in drought affected areas. So I suppose you'd, ideally you want something with a rainfall of above four or five hundred millimetres. But well, most of the fluoride affected areas are actually semi-arid and would okay. fall within the 300 to 700 millimeters rainfall. Okay. A couple of districts would be slightly lesser than that in Rajasthan and Gujarat. Uh -huh. But arsenic is actually in areas where there's very high rainfall. Yeah. More than 2,000 millimeters. Yeah. So one could sort of explore the spectrum of spaces where rainwater harvesting could actually be tried out. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No reason why not. Yeah. I'd be surprised if someone isn't re already trying it up there already, but you never know. <laughs> uh, the community information or messaging by which people are convinced that they can drink this water mm. is also very crucial to the project. Mm. Uh, and seeing is believing many a time. So mm. The challenge is as much in the engineering as in the social sector mm. also. Yeah, well, I suppose um, if we can get some of those people looking at your YouTube channel, perhaps that's a start. <laughs> yes, in Telugu and Kannada and Bengali also, right? Yeah. That's a start, that's true. Yeah. Virtual yeah. tours. Virtual tours. Yeah. yeah. One thing perhaps to consider is something called a water uh, yeah. tour, mm -hmm. where people from other affected areas are brought around habitations and schools and shown what could be done mm. to get them to think. And that's one area which hopefully would be worked at mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think uh, anything you can do to try and educate people as to this potential solution will be a step forward. Right. Yeah. And uh, especially since you come from the Engineers Without Borders Australia. Yeah. For me it uh, would be very exciting if the project materializes. Yeah. But also because of the potential that uh, more people can get involved and spread the message further. Absolutely. Yeah. And also help in this professional structuring yeah. of the whole uh, space. And yeah. How to use yeah. It. Well, I'll definitely be putting a little piece on the uh, mm -hmm. EWB website, you know, yeah. Knowledge Hub. So that's great. It's a matter of um, you know making sure that the option is always presented as an option, mm -hmm. so that people know that this works and it's a and it's a sound technology that can be adaptable for many different areas. And Andrew, uh, it's also for me that uh, rural Australia and yeah. rural New Zealand have actually drunk rainwater for quite some oh, time. Well, in many places they didn't have a choice. Hmm. And still continue to do so. Yes, yeah. Yes. And it's been found to be pretty good. A lot of people prefer it to city water. Right. So, it seems to cut across countries, this concept of grabbing rain and drinking this. Yeah, drink. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, even in the cities now, it, it's making a, um, a big appearance. Right. More so for um, non-potable uses, but some people are also drinking it as well. Right. So, it's part of the water-sensitive urban design? Absolutely. It's a very important part of it. And basics? Yes. Right. So, some lessons for our cities too as we go along. Well, uh, yeah, I, I have to say I'm very impressed with Bangalore who are making it compulsory retrospectively. Mm -hmm. We haven't done that yet. Yeah. I think that's a, a great move and right. it'll be good, you know, that'll make a big difference. Yeah, so cities can share their experience with Definitely. how to manage rainwater yeah. and stormwater. Yeah. 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 And Engineers Without Borders could be a channel for sharing such experiences. <laughs> That's, that's a big part of the idea, right. is knowledge sharing. Thanks, Andrew. Good luck on your journey to Hampi, <laughs> Bombay and possibly Ladakh. Thank uh, you very much.